What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can model a more complex deck using actual boards and extensions. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so this is just something kind of fun that I wanted to try to create. And basically what we're looking at is we're looking at trying to fill in a complicated space like this with a deck. And so um, in this case, what we're gonna assume is we're gonna assume there's gonna be a little bump up right here, and then there's gonna be kind of some perimeter boards and then like diagonal boards running across here. Now this could also work for like flooring materials or other things like that. But in this case, we're gonna use an extension a little bit later on that's gonna allow us to quickly remove materials and make all of this fit. But first we need to do a little bit of setup. And so in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by modeling out our perimeter boards. And so the perimeter boards are going to be what's going to kind of retain the other boards in here. Now, one thing I might recommend is maybe not modeling this out with geometry, but maybe modeling this out with a texture. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this. So I'm going to basically come in here and we're going to offset these edges. We're going to type in three and a half inches. So we're just selecting these like this and we're picking up the edges in here. And what we're going to do is we're gonna select that whole thing and we're gonna make it a group for right now. I'm just gonna double click in here. I'm gonna push pull it up and we're assuming this isn't gonna be very thick, maybe just like three quarters of an inch. So 0.75 like this. And so in this situation, we've got one board in here. I'm gonna go ahead and right click and hide it, but then we need to model another one. So we're just going to offset this in a little bit. I like to offset it in um, first off with a little bit of a gap, so I might type in like 0.25. Um, that's just gonna be a quarter inch gap. And then we'll offset this in again by three and a half inches right here. And then what we can do is we can make this a group. We're gonna push pull it and extrude it up by that 0.75 again, just like this. And we can go ahead and we can unhide our last board. So we've got our two perimeter boards in here. I'm also assuming we're gonna have a step over here, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna push pull this up by whatever the thickness of our board might be here. So maybe this is gonna be a five and a half inch step like this. So we're just gonna push pull this up and erase out this extra detail. And then we're gonna do the same thing over here where we're gonna create our kind of retainer boards. So just select this, offset. We'll do, where did I say, three and a half inches. And we'll go ahead and offset it again by a quarter inch. Then we'll offset this edge again by three and a half, like this. And notice how you can't really copy this over due to this angle right here. So copying this over, I don't think is gonna work very well. Um, so you have to model both of these separate. But basically what I wanna do is I wanna make this one a group. I'm gonna double click to pick all this up and make this one a group. And then I'll just push pull those up by that same thickness right here. And in this case, I can just double click with the push pull tool in order to extrude the other one up. So now we've got kind of our retainer boards in here. We might do the same thing over here, except we're just gonna push pull it down. So we'll push pull this down by, again, we'll go with, since this is already on the bottom of the board, we'll push pull this down by, again, five and a half inches right here. And you can erase out this extra geometry because you don't need it. So now we've got kind of the general shape of our deck figured out in here. And one thing you might want to think about doing is you might want to think about just triple clicking on this and putting all of this geometry in a group because now we're going to start adding our boards. And so in this case, I'm going to assume that I'm going to have boards running diagonally at a 45 degree angle right here. And so in order to do that, I'm going to start by using my protractor tool. So I'm just gonna activate that for my large tool set. We'll tap the up arrow key to lock this to straight up and down. We'll type in a value of 45 degrees. And then once we do that, we wanna model out our board. Now, drawing this board can be a little tricky now because we're not really locked to an axis anymore. Instead of drawing it and rotating it, I'm just going to adjust my model axes. I'm just gonna click in here, adjust the axes, pick them up like this. Notice how now my inferencing is set up in a way where I can model these boards really easy. And in this case, we're going to assume that these boards are three and a half inches 
on a face dimension. So that means that we wanna do, I'm just gonna type in 3.5 this way, 3.5 this way, and then we'll just use the midpoint in here in order to model this. And we're gonna make it the same height as these other boards over here. But again, notice how by adjusting that axis and making the inferencing align with this location, this gets a lot easier. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push pull this board out like this so that it extends beyond everything that's in my shape like this. And again, we're gonna copy this. So we wanna make sure that this has plenty of length because we're gonna use an extension in order to remove the material. You could probably use solid tools as well, but we're going to use an extension. So I'm gonna make this a group. I'm gonna use the move tool in copy mode. I'll just move this over by a quarter of an inch. So I have a gap. We'll just use the move tool in copy mode again. So M click control to go into copy mode. Notice how I can move my mouse over this point. And then I can just type in times and a number of copies. So we'll type in times five or times, we'll say times six. And then I'm gonna extend this board out like this. And we'll do the same thing. And remember that it doesn't really matter where we set our base point, as long as relative to where we want this to go, um, it's giving us the right spacing. So we'll type in times, we'll type in times 17. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So create my copy. And again, um, for every single time I ever create a deck video. Um, I get told that I'm modeling out the structure wrong. I probably am. In this case, I'm not even going to create the structure. Um, but in this case, I don't really care. It's more teaching how to use the tools. And then you should be able to model it however you want. But I want to take these objects and I want to put them in a group like this. And now we're going to be ready to remove our material. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to hide it for a second. And so what I want to do is I want to create a face in here that we're then going to use in order to remove this material. And in this situation, we can probably just take this face right here. And I'm just going to do a control C within that group. I'm going to click out of the group and I'm going to do an edit paste in place so that I have this raw geometry in here. I'm gonna move this up like this, and then we'll do an edit unhide last in order to get this deck material in here. Okay, so now we're at a point where we've got this all created and this geometry is all in a group like this. Well, what we can do is we can use a really cool extension from Curic called Curic Face Knife that you can download from Curic's website in order to cut this material. So. We're gonna take Curic Face Knife and I'll link to a longer tutorial about Curic Face Knife in the notes down below, but we're gonna select this. We're gonna activate Curic Face Knife and then we're just gonna double click on this face. Now, um, before this would give you kind of a visual preview of what it was going to do. So you'd click on it and it would kind of like show you a preview that seems to have gone away in SketchUp 2024. Um, so you can't really see that, but you can see that what this did and you can either delete this or just hide it, but you can see what this did is this cut that geometry based on where that face was. So you can see how you can use this in order to create that really complex geometry in here um, without having to do a whole lot of additional work. Well now, um, you probably figured this out, we're gonna do the exact same thing over here. So, and again, maybe we'll start kind of in the middle. I'm gonna draw 45 degree angle, probably speed this up because we've already done it once and you kind of have an idea, but we're going to add the axes and we're going to align them with this angle now. We're gonna do the same thing. So again, we're gonna make this pretty long and pretty long. Go ahead and triple click on it, we'll make it a group. And then we'll just use the move tool in copy mode to create a bunch of them. And it's probably gonna to have to be longer over here and probably do the same thing over here by making this longer. We wanna pick all of these up. And put them in a group. And then I'm just going to copy this face 
from within the group, do an edit paste in place outside of the group. And we'll move it up just so we can see it. You don't really have to move it up, but um, I am so I can see what I'm doing. Then I'm gonna select this. And it's usually a good idea to save before you do this. We're just gonna do a file, save. Run Keurig face knife and double click. And that's going to trim your wood using the footprint of that face, just like this. Now, you may wanna be a little bit careful with your wood pieces in here. You might want them to align a little bit differently. You would just wanna fix that before you do this creation. Then we do the same thing down here that we did with the edges. So I'm gonna copy this, do an edit, paste in place outside of that group. And then again on these, I'm just gonna make them a group. And there may be an easier way to do these on the bottom, but this ought to get it done for us pretty easy. We're just gonna push pull this up. That same thickness. And then we might go ahead and push pull this down. Five and a half inches. We'll erase out the extra. And I'm gonna go ahead and right click and reverse these faces. And then I'm just gonna come in here and just do a shift, double click, and I'm just gonna copy these. I'm gonna hide this right here and I'm gonna do an edit paste in place. So I've got these vertical faces. And you could go ahead and you could put these in a group if you wanted to just so you've got those vertical faces um, created in here. And then in this case, depending on what you were going to do with your wood, I'm gonna go ahead, set my axes so that they align right here. We'll just draw a line across. And you might do something different on that face, but now you've got this kind of roughed out the way that you like. And then from here, you might do a multiple different things. So you might add some railings in here um, using a tool like Profile Builder, or you could model them out yourself. You might do something else, but you can see how this is an easy way to put these kind of like diagonal boards in here along a complex surface. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you do wanna learn more about how to use SketchUp, make sure you check out my course, which I'll link to on this page. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.